This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath for game one of the upper bracket semifinals for the 2022 Winter Championship. We have made it all the way through the quarterfinals. We have two fresh best of fives for this video to determine who will be in the winner's bracket final, have the shot at going on to the grand final and the grand prize their portion of the $1,000 donated by Rotter Milan. Now, on the left side of Threshold 19, playing as the orange GDI, this is Dune Tiger. Dune Tiger, perhaps defeating all odds, defeating Drive, defeating Dimitri in the quarterfinals, and rushing for fast leg descents. Oh boy, zeroing out that bank account nearly. This is as the Traveler 59 is Master Leaf. One of the most storied players in Kane's Wrath. He's been around for a long while. He has been a top level player for longer than Dune Tiger has. And coming into this, he is the one whose people who people's eyes will be on. Uh, interesting descent rush. Going to be splitting his descents into, into a couple of different groups. Kind of too small of groups to really do very much. He is going to be able to jump on one Rifleman squad. A couple of more Rifleman squads going to be coming in. Very cheap response here from Dune Tiger. Master Leaf gets that tip spike, and indeed he does. With those destructive barrels, no, these are just weakened tip spikes. So that's actually a sort of perfect response from Master Leaf. He gets to sneak a couple of descents in through the back, gets the kill on the low health tip spike, and denies that very quickly to his opponent. The other tip spike is also low health. So actually, this very few descent squads, even when you get tagged a little bit by the rifleman, can actually still do some damage just by virtue of killing off those tib spikes. Denying the tib spikes from your opponent very early on sets you up nicely for the mid game. Descent's now going to get torn apart that there are APCs out on the field. And Master Leaf, he's the one who took down Rex coming into the semifinals. He has uh, not quite got his second refinery up just yet. It does get placed down right there. He defeated Rex coming into this. And of course, he is the one who has risen to the occasion, taken big championships in the past, or at least had very deep runs in some of them. Dune Tiger, we haven't had that same story yet. He has maybe made it to the semis, maybe even to the finals, but in a competition like this, you expect him to be a top four or a top eight player, and now he has his chance to go on to the winner's bracket final or the upper bracket final and have that shot at the grand final. Three tip spikes, all very low health. Only one of them getting sniped. I thought for sure that Master Leaf's plan was going to be sniping those tip spikes. After he sniped that first one, I thought for sure it was going to be all tip spikes. Then that was going to be the plan. Blue Tiberium does get stolen from the middle of the map, but very little. So this Harvester wasting a lot of time driving around, accomplishing very little for Master Leaf. Master Leaf's expansion may be a little bit late. He does have that Stasis Chamber rebuilt. He's got the Cultists now on the way. So his MCV moving to the natural expansion. It's late, but it is because he has prioritized that tech. Nerve Center is here. Cultists are here. His third refinery is super late but he can have a real big one-two punch depending on where these cultists land. He's heading along the south side. If he managed to sneak in and grab a couple of harvesters, that could be absolutely devastating to Dune Tiger, but Dune Tiger has a fair amount of defense. A couple of rifleman squads going out to meet them. No AP ammo just yet, so the cultists do survive a good bit of punishment. They are dodging and weaving right through the front line. Go for a harvester, but they are too deep on enemy territory to accomplish very much. A couple of rockets misfire there as they fire and land on a friendly unit. That mind control can uh, cause some problems, but so far, Dune Tiger has done a really good job of holding on to his units. Mostly good control from both players, not too many losses, and Master Leaf, he is spending all of his cash 
on those cultists. So if he doesn't get some serious value for them, he's going to be behind in a big, big way. Three Predator tanks is a big grab here. Cultists going to be getting pulled back. Not enough APCs, not enough AP ammo here for Master Leaf to be punished. And more and more as these Predator tanks push forward, this is going to be harder for Dune Tiger to deal with. That was pretty much the perfect grab, getting the three highest health Predator tanks, eliminating the APCs, knocking down some of these other Preds, and without hammerheads, this is going to be pretty difficult to deal with. Fortunately, the cultists have cycled back a little bit. Never mind. They're coming right back to the front line. For a second, I thought they were going to be taking a break, but it's going to have to be very careful control from Dune Tiger. This is buying so much time for Master Leaf to get that natural expansion up and running. He was late to it but not any more. Dune Tiger's next step, I assume, will be the airfield, double airfield, actually, and he's going hammerheads, of course. AP ammo is almost finished up, and that will give him the tools that he needs to deal with these cultists. I mean, we'll see. This is a lot of gunwalkers. That's a lot of anti-air to potentially roll in here, and good control from Master Leaf spots the hammerheads immediately and pulls back the cultists, and now they are in a dance. AP ammo is done. The tools have been equipped on both sides now. Master Leaf no longer has that advantage that he had mere moments ago. Buzzer Swarm support power gets called in, but it is basically a flop. And Master Leaf here at the front door is going to have to dodge hammerheads. No positive kills for those hammerheads. Cultists still hanging around high health bars, but Dune Tiger well done to control that engagement. Master Leaf, on the other hand, is nearly back up to where he would like to be. Kind of an awkward split of those refineries, but it is good enough to set himself up for the late game. He's got that tech already running. Hammerheads are not at the front, so this Predator tank will pay the price. Shaving off units one by one. These cultists, at least one, will pay the price, but the Hammerheads will be traded back. No, the Hammerheads escape, but so does one of the cultist squads. The dance back and forth between Traveler 59 and GDI. The return of these two factions to the forefront. Orca Strike going to be coming in and it will spot that warp chasm as Dune Tiger is needing to look to the ultra late game. And we could see that wall of juggernauts emerge at some point. Orca Strike actually gets completely denied there. Way too many gunwalkers over the middle of the map. And this Tib Spike is, uh, it's been healed up a bit so it won't go down immediately. Dune Tiger going to be looking for a little bit of cross map damage for basically the first time. He is going to step out onto the other side of the map and actually do a little bit of damage. Although trading hammerheads for Tib Spikes is a difficult trade at this point. Dune Tiger ready to go to his third. A little bit slow on the transition because of this Marv, I imagine. Although he may just decide to Marvist up that third field. Marv comes out. Eradicator Hexapod moments behind it. Immediate sell-off of both production facilities for both teams. And Plasma Missile Batteries have already been constructed. The Prodigy is here as well. There could be some problems in the horizon because of that Prodigy for Dune Tiger. It's double Zone Trooper, double Engineer for Dune. One single cultist squad shouldn't be too much trouble for Dune Tiger to deal with. Tripods on the move in the south. Hammerheads are here to support the Marv. Ah, okay, that one cultist did actually get the one capture that uh, that really mattered there. All right, tripods were in danger, but teleported away, and that does reveal that yes, the prodigy is on the map. Dune Tiger may need to invest in sniper teams as this late game can be pretty difficult depending on where the cultists and the prodigy are. Sniper teams can be a way to deal with that. Finally, that last cultist member gets cleaned up. Dune Tiger is safe, at least in the north. Not too difficult of a thing to conquer a couple of gunwalkers with some predator tanks. Marv is going to reverse move. He did a little bit of Marvesting of that center green Tiberium field, and Master Leaf may actually be looking to take this for himself. His drone ship is here, but no refineries on the way. He does have enough cash in the bank to afford it. Dune Tiger a little bit low on cash, going to be recycling some of his buildings, getting himself ready for that new expansion in the middle of the map. 
And by the middle of the map, I do mean the corner of the map, as Dune Tiger is going to be expanding back there. Master Leaf continuing to harvest from that field. Both players have stabilized after a little bit of a tumultuous early and mid game. The aggression from Master Leaf throwing Dune Tiger off a little bit. And now things have quieted down by quite a bit. They've stabilized by a good amount. Juggernaut's making their way forward. Eradicator Hexpod backing off. Master Leaf looking to rebuild his entire front line right here in the middle of the map. He has taken the fourth field on the map so far all for himself. Scan comes in. Hammerheads right on the edge of danger. I think comp armor has probably been purchased. Yeah, at this point, the armory was built a good while ago. Comp armor is there. EMP grenades as well. Dune Tiger will not have to rely on only the shockwave artillery. He does have the opportunity to use those EMP grenades. We'll see if they hit or if they whiff. At any case, he does have a little bit of surplus of harvesters, given that he only built one refinery at his third. He's got pretty good income, but it's just a little bit slow to reach his bank account. Testing the waters. No real danger here for Master Leaf. He can try and uh, just siphon off as much of that health bar as possible because with the Corruptors nearby, with the Prodigy somewhere on the map, he's got no real danger. I guess if, he, if he's looking away for too long, maybe there's a little bit of a danger, but... In all honesty, Master Leaf, unless he falls asleep at his keyboard, is not going to be losing the Eradicator Hexapod in this moment. Shockwave Artillery is going to try and lock it down. There's the blink away. Draws in the Shockwave Artillery. Nice debit against the bank account of Dune Tiger. And unfortunately for Dune Tiger, spending all of that cash and getting nothing for it. Shockwave Artillery will be dodged here. Area Mind Control going to be locking down a couple of these slingshots, trying to deny the slingshots and that will be a kill against several of those slingshots. EMP locks down the Marv, the Eradicator Hexpod getting some good damage in. The Marv will not be saved. Supersonic airstrike a little bit too late, and that Marv goes down. Dune Tiger being forced somewhat into this engagement. There's the blink forward, the phase on the Eradicator, and two Juggernauts go down immediately. Master Leaf crushing through the late game army of Dune Tiger, and Dune Tiger is split and spent. He's got cash in the bank, but I don't know that he's going to have the time to spend it. He's going to be able to knock down these air forces, but can he do anything about this Eradicator marching on forward? One critical blink, one critical EMP, and now suddenly Dune Tiger's army is in shambles. He does need to draw this game out a good while longer. Uh, what are these cultists here for? The slingshots or the juggernauts? I think they were going for the juggernauts, but the slingshot will have to be their consolation prize here as Master Leaf pulls back and lets his planetary assault carriers do the work. Oh, those juggernauts so close to getting eliminated. He may have to settle for no crushes and just go for the kill the old-fashioned way. He's going to get one juggernaut. He'll get the other one as well. Okay, there we go. He gets the other one. That's four Juggernauts down. He can kill off the Husks. The MCV has been pushed back or sold off at any rate. Master Leaf will be denying the Husks from Dune Tiger, and Dune Tiger trying to do the same to Master Leaf. Master Leaf, speedy engineers actually grab one of the Husks, and Dune Tiger falling apart in mere moments. Master Leaf controlling the middle of the map. He hasn't even harvested that much from the center. He does have one refinery here. He's got a couple of harvesters, but mostly this has been a ground control game for Master Leaf. And starting out a best of five in a double elimination bracket with a win in the semifinals is gonna feel good. But of course, this is not the end of the road. Dune Tiger with big money in the bank. Big money and no way to spend it. I'm guessing he never rebuilt those production facilities, so he is at somewhat limited production. His MCV way back there, his war factory, only a single war factory pumping out slingshots. He's got a single barracks and a single airfield as well. I assume the Reclamator Hub is going to get rebuilt, and he will eventually reestablish that Marv as long as he can draw this game out. Master Leaf, on the other hand, 
happy to let his bank account climb higher and higher, has all of the time and the opportunity in the world to slowly build up his army. He lost so little in that last engagement and now moving out with the Eradicator Hexapod once again. Phase probably hasn't reset. Temporal Wormhole maybe hasn't, isn't off cooldown yet, but both of them are getting close. And of course, he's got the teleport away of the Prodigy. He can blink that Eradicator Hexapod back at any moment. Back to the safety of the middle of the map. Dune Tiger getting outplayed in the first part of this game. Now, with a zero in his bank account, he has spent all of his cash trying to get that Marv back up and running, and he's just having a little bit of trouble actually getting it out the door. The slow tick of that progress bar will eventually yield the Marv, but not just yet. Harvesters may be getting sniped. Ah, a little bit of a blue Tiberium steal. Huge amount of rocket squads and grenadiers getting cleaned up by this buzzer swarm support power. The first one was a big L, but the second one was a big W for Masterleaf. And Masterleaf has pushed his front line even further forward. Extremely careful, cautious, and controlling play by Masterleaf. Very, very few mistakes. He has just played this one out so slow, but so methodical, making basically every correct decision. It's uh, not a perfect game, but it is a very well executed game. It is, it is just so rare, the mistakes from Master Leaf. I mean, I guess he lost like a couple of Tiberium spikes. He lost some units, but no big misclicks. Uh, he has given no big advantages to Doom Tiger. This just feels like Master Leaf has played out game one so incredibly carefully, so incredibly well, that it feels like Doom Tiger can do nothing to take it back from him. Obviously, there would be some big mistakes that Master Leaf could make. There could be some uh, plays that, Ma that Doom Tiger could try and force, but it just seems unlikely that Master Leaf is going to make those mistakes given how well he has played out the first part of this game, how careful his control has been, how good his decision-making has been. It just seems unlikely that Dune Tiger is going to be able to force those mistakes. You know, maybe there's an opportunity for, uh, you know, like Hammerheads to try and move into Backstab, but then, of course, that leaves his army more vulnerable to cultists. Maybe there was an opportunity for him to sneak out some units. Maybe, you know, get some sniper teams out and use his juggernauts to bombard the tech so that he doesn't have to worry about the plasma missile batteries. But, like, the main base has vulnerabilities. The natural expansion has vulnerabilities. And, well, tungsten shells will make short work of two devastate. Oh, the Devastator Warship survives! And two of the slingshots get caught by a movement bug. I assume he didn't intentionally send those forward to their death. I assume that was an unintentional movement bug packing the wrong way as all of the other slingshots end up over here. Two of them end up on the wrong side of the ridge. And that sort of stuff happens occasionally. Those movement bugs do plague us. And there are some things that Dune Tiger maybe could have done earlier on in this game. But this late in the game, where Master Leaf has been allowed to take control and keep control of this game for so long, maybe there were opportunities in the past, but now it feels like there just aren't any. He's got his tip spike. That is always going to be ticking away. He's got these two tip spikes. They're, they're always going to be ticking away for him. But other than that, his army is... Unless, unless Master Leaf makes some, makes some big mistakes, his army is just almost never going to win against Master Leaf's army. Maybe if Master Leaf just walked right into him, he would have some kind of an opportunity, but he doesn't even have that many juggernauts anymore. Dune Tiger is waiting out a life sentence, it feels like. I like the attempt at the Firehawk. Good use of Strato Fighter to escape on after the missiles fire. The, the danger is after the missiles fire, flying through that field of planetary assault carriers and well there's the blink forward the emp was a little bit late a little bit slow here 
for Masterly, but it may not even matter. This Marv is taking so much damage, and there's no one-click saving for this Marv. No insta-save move. He can try and use a supersonic airstrike or something to thin out these planetary assault carriers. The slow field over on the left side. The hammerhead's getting caught by it, getting chased down a little bit. The Marv does survive. It does back off. And actually, that one tripod did go down. But again, Master Leaf, no big losses. He lost these two tripods over there, which maybe he forgot about. But he can reclaim those husks very easily. The noose gets tighter. The area gets smaller. There's the blink forward trying to go for the slingshots phase. I'm sure we'll follow. There it is. Lands on that eradicator, keeps it safe, and blows open the front door as there is just not much army left for June Tiger. He had his chance in this game, but at this point, it's a little too late. Juggernaut still firing away at that at that. Uh, eradicator because there's basically nothing else on the ground for them to shoot as the air armada assaults the base dune tiger has been defeated the gg comes out a somewhat elongated game there as master leaf got further and further and further ahead even the economy graph nearly flatlining for dune tiger but that will do it for game number one an exciting start and a petering out as Master Leaf just played that one out so incredibly well. And game two sends us to Nova Riparius. First two games in this series, maps that are quite new to the map pool and maps that I think viewers will be a little bit less familiar with. We're not seeing some of those old faithfuls, at least not just yet. I'm sure we'll see them in the later parts of the series or maybe in our second semi-final. But for now, it's going to be two new and pretty different maps in the north now playing as the orange marked of Kane. This is Dune Tiger. Down 0-1. It is a best of five, so... We're not worried about him just yet. Meanwhile, plain green, plain Traveler 59. This is Master Leaf. Showing domination in that game number one. He's always been a screen player. He has always been a Traveler 59 specialist. And he showed it in that last one. No points of weakness. No points of easy exploitation for Dune Tiger. No obvious markers of, oh, here's the way to clean that up. Instead, Dune Tiger is going to switch things up to Marked of Cain. This is a map with no blue Tiberium, which for a, you know, post-2014 community-made map is actually pretty rare. We kind of hit a, a formula that worked really well three maps or three fields per player and then either one or two slow growth blue tiberium fields and this map you know it changes that up just a little bit here you do have a traditional natural expansion and then there are well one and a half other fields per player but they start out small they grow up over time and so you do have this sort of either go for the middle or go for your backdoor pocket expansion for your third. Either way, these maps a little bit different from what we are used to seeing in Kane's Wrath in the last couple of years of competitive play. Marked of Kane versus Traveler 59. So no flame rushes, no flame weapons at all for Dune Tiger. He's going to have to be making good use of those EMPs. And maybe he's hoping that the superior infantry of Marked of Cain will be more of an answer than the Hammerheads were. Normally GDI, you know, they've got the Hammerheads, they've got the sniper teams, riflemen are pretty good, APCs are pretty good once you get AP ammo. They have some tools to deal with the mind control. But once there was a certain point, Master Leaf just kind of said, Eh, no more mind control. That was my early slash mid-game option. I'm no longer interested in that mind control, and it is going to be right into a second war factory. It's bike buggy. It is an aggressive opening, but this is not some kind of all-in. And in the follow-up behind this, even though Dune Tiger is basically out of money, will most likely... Oh, okay. No, never mind. This is, uh... I don't know what he's doing. This is... Somewhat interesting. Heavy dependence on buggies so far. 
This is not a harvester killing force. This is, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a safety check. Maybe he doesn't want to get caught unawares, so he did go second war factory before refinery, and now we're kind of in this awkward spot for Dune Tiger. We do have the stasis chamber out. There is the potential of cultists, but it might just be for fast legs. Master Leaf for now, playing this one out a little bit different than the last game. No descent rush, but he does have enough forces to try and put some pressure on in the mid game. Seekers, Gunwalkers, Descents. Actually, just Seekers and Descents. No Gunwalkers at the current moment. Uh, if the control is right, this can be a very powerful unit composition. We'll see if the bikes are up for it. It might have to be a little bit more of a scorpion buggy composition. We'll see if the bike buggy works out. For now, the buggy's going to be able to center on and destroy these descents. A couple of seekers going to be getting in here. We'll be able to pick off at least one of the buggies. Might need a couple of more reinforcements here for Dune Tiger. His bank account is getting low, but so is Master Leafs. But his reinforcements will be able to hold this off. No need for Scorpion tanks, at least not just yet. Lightning Spike gets added on. Repair drones could also be called in in a couple of moments from Master Leaf once he's got a little bit more cash in the bank. And Dune Tiger, he drops that additional refinery. No laser turrets, instead goes for the Shredder. He wants to clean up those descents, and he will deal with the Seekers, with his Scorpions, with his bikes. Harvester's not getting targeted down. Master Leaf is just looking to trade one for one with those Seeker tanks. Over on the left side, it is going to be the Harvesters getting targeted down. One going down, two going down. Right there, it gets eliminated. And the third will be safe next to that War Factory. The Stealth being a bit of an advantage here for Dune Tiger. As these units pull away, he can get back to harvesting. And Master Leaf, fortunately for him, has a lot of things that do detect Stealth. But the attack... Peter's out. Dune Tiger spending big on his defense. His awkwardness of the refineries is not making him comfortable in this moment. And I guess he can go ahead and sell off one of these refineries to try and transition into his natural a bit more solidly. But a lot of unit losses on both sides and only harvester losses on the side of Dune Tiger. Two harvesters, well, it's not necessarily the end of the world. It is never fun, it is, that's never what anyone wants, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. It's kind of hard to gauge with how much Dune Tiger spent on his defense that he wasn't investing in tech. He hasn't landed any big EMPs and now he has mechapedes to worry about. Master Leaf decides his center is going to be the middle of the map. EMP catches two of these Mechapedes, but they does not stop them from firing those last final shots. It's going to be Scorpions against Mechapedes. There are Venoms here, but this Prodigy moves forward, and this Prodigy is going to go for the MCV. There's the capture. There's the cell, and Dune Tiger's tech is going to be frozen at this point. He got the airfield out, but that is not much of a consolation prize against this army. Master League Parade pushing across the map more and more and more units. It's going to be descents. It's going to be repair drones, and it's going to be these Mechapedes. Dune Tiger fighting for his life in between his main and his natural the chaos will not stop for dune tiger and now in low power mode his mcv a complete shutdown there as master leaf in game number one tears dune tiger apart and now in game number two continuing to rip him down the attack won't necessarily end here master leaf can keep up the pressure if he wants or he can back off knowing that he has completely halted Dune Tiger's game plan. He has completely thrown a stick into the spoke of his wheels. Knocked him head over heels. And now all of the buggies go down, so these descents are going to have a field day against those scorpions. The lightning spike on the cooldown here as he comes back in. Area mind control just to add insult to injury. The MCV pops on back out, and this prodigy is already waiting for it. There's the buzzer swarm support power getting called in. The descents close the distance, and just the one, two, three punch. GG! as Master Leaf takes another MCV away and Dune Tiger drops in game number two. Against Rex, Rex, Master Leaf opened 3-2-0.
and was unable to close out that last game until game number five. And here he looks in such dominant control that all we can do is hope that game three is the start of the comeback for Dune Tiger. Game three sends us to a map that I think we'll all be a bit more familiar with. Tournament Odyssey will be the battlegrounds. And in the north, sticking with Mark of Cain, he needs your energy, he needs your cheers. Give it up for Dune Tiger. And in the south, looking dominant, looking in control, plain yellow, plain screen, while well, Traveler 59, this is Master Leaf. Tournament Odyssey, many players do consider this to be a nod favored map. It's big, it's open, it's wide, it's got these very minimal amounts of terrain, but it's got these big open attack paths, very good for bike buggy to move all around. But of course, some players thinking that a map is favored or maybe even if a map does advantage one faction a little bit more does not mean that things are over here master leaf against rex he had a difficult time closing out that series dune tiger is um looking a little bit less in control but one of the things that rex actually got a win with was a zocom versus black hand game which is not what i would have expected Awaken does get cut down. The scout does get denied. Uh, at the moment, not that there is anything of note to scout, but you do want to see, oh, is this going to be a portal follow-up? Is this going to be a uh, stasis chamber after that? Because that would be quite an indicator that it is going to be another two-base kind of push, another natural expansion killer kind of move. And for now, it's not. It is absolutely positively normal here on tournament odyssey things are looking very average things are looking very calm in the last game dune tiger opened with a very quick second war factory pumped out some bikes and buggies wasn't able to get much done with them and master leaf was able to use his positioning on the map to keep up the pressure cross the map and eventually execute the killing blow it did start with that descent seeker pressure that got a couple of kills that split the forces of dune tiger but here it's going to be a refinery focus it's going to be right into scorpion tanks for dune tiger and he will get the complete scout with that buggy running all over the base of master leaf slipping in and out seeing everything that there is to see master leaf on the other hand it's right into the third refinery for him as well. Natural expansion and, all right, things might get shaken up from this point on. The portal gets deployed, the descents get built, and hey, that may very well be a stasis chamber on the way. Well, fast legs are certainly going to be the on the menu, and it looks like we have another opportunity for descents and seekers to show their worth another two base split attack maybe what we're looking at here for master leaf it worked out so well in the last one dune tiger suspecting this it is scorpions it is buggies on the way for dune tiger it will come down to the control it will come down to the tactics but it is going to be into an operation center immediately for those dozer blades can also go potentially laser turrets. It's a weird balance that you have to strike. Laser turrets help you deal with the Seekers. EMP does land, gets one EMP. The slowdown of this attack, the spotting of everything by Doom Tiger is perfect. And of course, Shredder turrets or laser turrets could be added back into the mix. MCV packs up at the worst possible time and Dune Tiger is confident that he can take this. He didn't pull his harvesters early enough. He will lose one and no, he decides to unpack his MCV. He's gonna go for the body blocks. His units will be able to clean up those descents, but now the war still rages here on the right side. Looks like we do have a couple of descents also moving out way on the left side of the map for Masterleaf, continuing to put pressure through the middle of the map. Seeker tanks are getting cleaned up. Dune Tiger is reforming his front line and he is starting to potentially scare away this army. No, it is just a couple of scorpion tanks that are being given away virtually for free 
Dune Tiger stepping out onto the map when really he should probably be playing a bit more defensively. We'll see if he's able to do any damage. Lightning Spike comes down and now the counterattack does begin. He has a Shredder Turret ready to go, but it's just not fast enough. One Harvester down, two Harvesters will be sent into the dirt and that is a total of three kills for Master Leaf. The defense has been tighter, but at the last moment, Master Leaf swoops in and gets two extra Harvester kills. Those descents, when they find the opening like that, are so quick to pounce, and Dune Tiger falls apart a little bit at the natural expansion. His defense was almost solid. It was almost enough, and then it wasn't. He gets a good kill on that group of units. Cultists now out on the field. Slow field catching these buggies, catching these scorpions, area mind control once again locking them down, Master Leaf looking to perfect the two base play. Who's ever heard of taking a third base? Well, when you just don't need to, why bother? Dune Tiger, on the other hand, hoping to play that. As I say, that Master Leaf actually takes the expansion point and does get an additional refinery here. Venoms are on, almost certainly on the way. This cultist, I think, will be dead. Oh, he tried to steal him away. So Master Leaf, he sends them right into the belly of the beast, and then he just blinks them away with the use of that prodigy so he doesn't actually lose the cultists. Instant save there for Master Leaf. Dune Tiger, he has been reacting. He has been playing catch up in every single game and now in game number three he's doing it again does get a positive kill on those cultists can't even sweep up this random descent squad they are small victories but they are victories nonetheless nerve center gets rebuilt no that is a second nerve center that is two nerve centers uh for master leaf i guess a backup nerve center or he forgot he had it or something at any rate, Dune Tiger for the first map, uh, for the first time on the other side of the map, Plasma Missile Battery does get deployed. Cultists may be on the way to help push away this army, but no, it's just tripods for now. It is just tripods and seekers. No upgrades for these Scorpion tanks late game. You just have the Dozer Blades, you have nothing else. And Dune Tiger, his heart is going to sink a little bit here when he sees that expansion is already up. Nice kill on the Prodigy. Dune Tiger starting to get his feet back under him. He's now behind in the expansions where he was keeping pace. He has now fallen behind. And of course, with no late game upgrade for these Scorpion tanks, it does make this final transition a little bit more precarious. Tier 3 is out for Dune Tiger, so there is always the option of going into avatars. I feel like no late game flame weapons kind of makes things a little bit annoying for uh, for any marked of cane player. The ability to not, you know, you can never sneak in a flame tank around the side. You can never go for those just small, relatively inexpensive late game options where you just sneak in a flame tank or two or along the side of the base. Uh, no EMP coils. These, these buggies are getting very close to that tripod for no discernible reason. Uh, perhaps EMP coils is about to finish. One tripod not even going to go down here. Scorpion tanks are sticking around. They might be able to get the last couple of shots. He is trading out basically all of his Scorpion tanks for one tripod kill. And in the end of the day, the tripod doesn't even die. It just gets blinked away. And to the other side of the map, these two tripods go. These tripods have walked the slow walk of loneliness. And it is going to be supercharged particle beams, the upgrade here, as these tripods will get a kill on a war factory, scare away the harvesters. The EMPs will lock them down. And if Dune Tiger can pivot, he can grab those two husks. That might actually be the start of a turnaround here for Dune Tiger. But for now, he's going to be losing more units to that swarm column. Both players assaulting the, their opponent's main base. And well, for the moment, Master Leaf was getting the better end of that deal, but actually Dune Tiger, he kills both of the tip spikes. And then if he steals these husks, that may actually be a bit of a turnaround for Dune Tiger. We'll see if he actually secures those husks. I feel like it just it's too valuable not to take them. He might just kill them off. Cultists have been rebuilt. Venom goes for the scout, and Master Leaf might actually try and uh, kill off those husks with the Mechapedes. 
Dune Tiger, no engineer on the way. He's focused on that third. He does actually have his third up. He has his third up and running. Unfortunately for Dune Tiger, he doesn't kill off the refinery. So Master Leaf maintains that location. EMP is trying to lock down these Mechapedes, but the Mechapedes will clean up at least three of the Venoms. The EMP locks down this Mechapede, holding it in place. There are the engineers in the top left-hand corner of the screen. No fast legs, though. And unfortunately for Dune Tiger, he will not get... Oh, no! Once again, Master Leaf just causing problems for Dune Tigers. Cultists grabbing Harvesters, getting back to the other side of the map, selling off that refinery. And tripods will be here. Supercharged Particle Beams are good, but three Harvesters stolen away from Dune Tiger here. Three Harvesters completely eliminated in this way. And Dune Tiger is going to be kind of forced to kill off his own harvesters to eliminate those harvesters. And Master Leaf has completely gutted the third base of Dune Tiger. Master Leaf follows it up with his own Eradicator Hexapod. Dune Tiger does potentially grab one husk from this. Master Leaf will get the kill on the on the husk with the lightning spike. Might even get the kill on the engineer as well. Dune Tiger almost bouncing back, but ultimately not able to stabilize. He's got his refinery back up and running. Losing those husks is annoying for Dune Tiger. He had the opportunity. Two harvesters full of Tiberium stolen away from Dune Tiger. They're literally just going to unload their cargo for Master Leaf. And Master Leaf, they're not perfect games, but these games have been so well played out both offense and defense. In some cases, he goes quite aggressive. He brings the attacks. He, he's got those early mid-game attacks down. And then he slows the pace of the game down. He starts investing in these very small attacks and he pulls off stuff like this. Mastermind goes to the other side of the map or Prodigy goes to the other side of the map, completely guts the economy of Dune Tiger. His income will just hit the floor for that portion of the game. And then Master Leaf also executing these little attacks, like over here, cleaning up all of those refineries, meaning that as that field regrows, Dune Tiger will not be able to benefit from that. EMPs might catch something here. These Awakened were just out in front taking damage and uh, not landing any EMPs or generating any opportunities. Harvesters might be the next target. We'll see if Master Leaf is able to cut down the third base economy even more. He might just be looking to end the game here and now. Eradicator Hexpod is on the front line. Halfway done with that Redeemer. Dune Tiger has the cash in the bank, but Master Leaf has oh so, so much more as there's the Temporal Wormhole going to be slowing down these Scorpions, slowing down that War Factory as well. It's all tripods and an Eradicator. It is late game, high health units, and these Scorpions from so long ago that Dune Tiger never wanted to rely on are the only thing that he has holding back the tide. EMP lands, Redeemer steps out, but this Redeemer will stand alone against this Scrin army. For now, another Harvester escapes, another Harvester stolen away by Master Leaf. The EMP control center in the middle of the map actually was grabbed by Dune Tiger, so that is a nice potential, but that is probably still minutes away here as this Redeemer looks to try and clean up this army. Five tripods just exited off to the left, and they will wait for a better opportunity. Master Leaf could have kept up this attack. He could have gone for more value, but he decides to back off to try and play it safe and to slow the game down once again. Stealth Tank for Dune Tiger. Love the attempt. It does feel very little, very late in this game. Maybe he will be able to turn this into something. Maybe he will find those openings, find those opportunities. Venom's going to be crossing back over to the air tower, getting up those repairs. And that is what Master Leaf has been doing with his cash. Mass Storm Rider transition. 
takes down the operation center will target the power plants after that and he is going to send doom tiger into low power mode that's why master leaf wasn't concerned with ending the game right there he had more than 10 grand in the bank but now Dune Tiger taps out, and Master Leaf will take a 3-0 clean sweep into the winner's bracket finals. He has defeated Rex. He has defeated Dune Tiger, cut his throat, and moved on into the semi, the semifinals for the event, but the winner's bracket finals. And that will send us to the second semifinal of the upper bracket. And that will send us back to the tower of threshold 19 for our second semi-final of the day coming in from his series versus phoenix as the green gdi this is green zero and defeating shock trepid three two playing traveler 59 playing cyan this is futurama Futurama and Green Zero in semifinal B of the Winter Championship. If I didn't already say, big thanks to Rotter Milan for donating the $1,000 prize pool for this event. Big thanks to Bike Rochones for hosting and organizing this event. If you haven't seen his coverage, he's been uh, streaming and casting a bunch of the games live and some of the other games get casted and uploaded to his channel. So if you haven't seen Bike Rush's coverage, he has some stuff that I have not covered. And also, he has been uh, streaming some of these games live, whereas I have been a little bit behind the times. The, uh, the start of the tournament did not work out with my schedule, and so I've been sort of been playing catch-up ever since then. But here we are in the second semifinal. Who goes on? to the winner's bracket final. Who will it be against Master Leaf, who very handily dismantled Dune Tiger and sent him down to the lower brackets where he will have to fight it out for a chance at the comeback. Green Zero and Futurama both, I would say, have a much better chance of taking Master Leaf down in that winner's bracket series. Master Leaf, he has played Futurama and Green Zero many, many, many times. And I feel like he and Green Zero probably have close to a 50-50 ratio. I feel like sometimes Master Leaf will be in control and sometimes Green Zero will be in control. They've played lots of team games together over the years and they've met each other in tournaments a couple of times. But honestly, I don't know that they have met each other in tournaments any time recently. I feel like uh, Master Leaf hasn't been playing in a lot of tournaments in the last couple of years. He's played in some, and Green Zero hasn't been playing in a ton of tournaments either, at least in the last couple of months. Not that there have been a ton of events to play in, but I feel like these guys haven't met in a tournament in a little while. There may be some uh, fight at some point that I missed out on or I'm not remembering, but I would be interested to see them clash in a tournament. I feel like I've seen more of Futurama and Master Leaf recently. We'll have to see both of these guys opening up with Traveler 59. For now, it's going to be Seekers and Seekers only from Futurama. Green Zero is going to defend it with Pitbulls. It is not that Gunwalker Descent combo that Master Leaf was trying. And also, Futurama is not going for these low health Tiberium spikes for any kind of early wins. He's just looking to trade out with these Pit Bulls one to one. And now he is going to get overwhelmed by the Pit Bulls, and he does not get that final shot against that very weak Pit Bull of Green Zero. Descent's now on the way. The natural expansion is up and running. Low power mode, so the stasis chamber is frozen at about halfway done with that fast leg upgrade. Green Zero, on the other hand, it's going to be into Orcas. It's going to be into an airfield there in the back of his base. And okay, you actually can traverse through this tower. This is a, an interesting thing that we are learning. The tower can be clipped through. And that does mean that there is a huge amount of dead airspace in the north side of this map. Sometimes we do see these maps with big dead zones. They're generally more uh, water. But in this case, he's going to find Big Dead Zone, and he's going to get one Harvester for free, two Harvesters for free, and he might take a little bit of damage as this third Harvester takes a lot of rockets, but perfect execution of three Harvesters there 
by Green Zero. One APC will be grabbed by some cultists, and this is where Green Zero is going to be wishing that he had a couple of uh, hammerheads here to help deal with this. But grabbing an APC and not grabbing a Harvester, that's a huge win for Green Zero. The fact that he's only losing an APC from this cultist and that it did not dive and grab a Harvester is absolutely amazing for Green Zero. AP ammo delayed a little bit here. Three Harvester kills for delay in AP ammo. I think he's going to be okay with that. One Cultist goes down, and we see in the near-perfect control of Master Leaf a cautious and a uh, careful execution of Dune Tiger. But here, the mistakes are coming for Futurama. He loses a Cultist. Another Cultist only grabs an APC, and then behind that, he was not ready for those Orcas at all. Green Zero getting some wins. Futurama looking to strike back with a little bit of a win. Eh, trying, killing a Tib Spike is not uh, the win that killing multiple Harvesters is, but at least he did get something. Green Zero now going to be pivoting to the natural expansion. Gunwalkers are waiting. Prodigy is there as well. It does get spotted by Green Zero, and that will be the denial of that aerial attack. Futurama has made safe his base from these Orcas. Green Zero loses everything on exit. I imagine he will produce some hammerheads before he sells off that airfield. Cultists now coming in along the southern edge of the map. These harvesters are completely exposed. Green Zero's economy at the natural could be completely gutted. Futurama has been able to escape with some of this blue Tiberium. Two more loads of blue Tiberium will escape Green Zero's grasp as Futurama heads back home. There isn't a ton waiting here for Green Zero. He's got Gunwalkers, and I'm sure he does have some other units hidden away somewhere, but it's going to be a Prodigy area mind control behind this. Green Zero is going to be losing three Harvesters to those Cultists, so we'll see if he's able to actually knock those Cultists down. Or no, the Cultists just ran in! They're getting gunned down by Harvesters! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Futurama completely fumbles his opportunity. Green Zero puts on the lightest pressure at the natural expansion. Futurama ready to push it back. Fumbles as he goes for a win. He goes for the cross map and he completely fails. Those cultists could have been so much more important for Futurama, but now he'll have to find another way. Gunwalkers are going to be able to find a little bit of an exposed base. Green Zero did not return back home with his APC Rocket Trooper armor army like I did expect him to. There's the blink forward. The Eradicator will find a couple of kills here, find a couple of crushes, but the sniper team does escape out the back. And no, the sniper team half escapes out the back, but it does not stop this force of hammerheads that Green Zero is building. We saw him against, uh, against Phoenix find some real value with those hammerheads. And for now, Futurama says, not so lucky. Zone troopers inside of the hammerheads, juggernauts beside them. It can be an extremely powerful force. Futurama will need to be on his toes. One tripod going down. Futurama is going to reclaim that husk. And meanwhile, in the corner, a couple of sniper teams, while well, one sniper team takes a little bit of damage there on that uh, on their health bar. They will be able to call in these juggernaut shots. If they get close to the signal transmitter, they might be able to knock it down in one volley. Futurama has stolen all of the blue Tiberium, which is definitely good for him, especially in his economy as he lost out on that op opportunity to gut Green Zero's economy. That was uh, a bit of a misplay. Losing the cultists isn't necessarily the end of the world, but it's embarrassing to lose the cultists to harvesters. Harvesters just gunning down those cultists one by one. Blink forward by the Eradicator. He does have a Prodigy behind this almost certainly. There might be some sniper teams targeting down that Prodigy, but for now, Futurama thinks that it is safe, and it is indeed safe to blink away that Eradicator. Gets himself one Juggernaut, does a little bit of damage, dances out, and will, you know, be a little bit annoying there. Tier three will get targeted down. Not enough Juggernauts to get it in one go. Sniper team is standing by. Couple more shots will end this tier three. 
Oh, area mind control cancels that sniper team, and I think he'll be able to get the kill. Okay, there. The sniper team runs into the stormed column range, and it's going to be the Orca Strike to try and save that. Engineer is coming in as well. The Orca Strike will get here first, and no! The blink forward perfect by Futurama! The Prodigy coming in with that teleport of the Engineer to save the Tier 3. The battle of the wills for that tier three. Green Zero sniper team getting shut down. The last bit going to be dealt by that Orca strike. And then Futurama saves it. Hammerheads will circle the front. Uh, going to be able to shut down any more pack production. Danger zone. Oh, doesn't actually get the air. Okay, comes back in for it. No... No plasma disc launchers to knock down, at least not at the exp uh, not at the natural. There are here in the middle of the map. Third base has been taken by both players. Double refinery is present for both players. No multi-MCV just yet for Green Zero. Uh, honestly, kind of surprised that there hasn't been a multi-MCV yet. But the Marv is out on the field. Zone troopers will jump inside of the Marv, and there are two engineers waiting. I think this guy was supposed to be told to get in there. Will be kind of annoying to have the engineer sitting up front while the zone trooper sits in back. It doesn't make that much of a difference at the end of the day, but it is uh, a little bit annoying just to have that missing. However, Firehawks will turn and bring down at least one. Well, there it goes again. The blink forward. The MCV gets saved. There's probably a prodigy behind this, and there's the sell off of that Space Command uplink once again. The EMP, the shockwave artillery, cannot find these eradicators. Eradicator taking big, big damage, but if he can trade out these hammerheads, or even if he can get a couple of these harvester kills, Futurama will be happy to trade out that health bar for a little bit of damage. Uh, he needs it. Okay, there we go. Does blink away. Not much was really done with that he wasted some cash of green zero which is not phenomenal but green zero has plenty in the bank green zero can edge away this field just marvesting it up little bit by little bit uh, blue tiberium is starting to regrow in the north but these juggernauts if they actually land their shots can quickly deal with that marv and the name of the game might be EMP. Who can control the battlefield? Blink forward into the group of Juggernauts, and he doesn't get the first crush. He is going to go for the Harvester. No, he doesn't get the Harvester either. And now the Juggernauts have encircled this Eradicator, but it will be whisked away in time. The Eradicator Hexapod always saved in these moments. Packs are here. Juggernauts are a little bit explosed. The slow field is kind of causing some problems for this Green Zero army. Plasma Disc Launcher gets added in. Firehawks sweep in, but to not enough effect to stop the army of Futurama. EMP Grenadiers are moving forward. Supersonic Airstrike clears out the drones, and there's the blink forward of that Eradicator Hexpod, but the blink away immediately. Futurama does not want to wait for those EMP grenades to land, and Green Zero has now, I think, five Grenadier squads on the front line. The recipe looks the same, almost identical, from Master Leaf and Futurama. Both playing Cyan, Traveler, or uh, actually, maybe it wasn't playing Cyan. I don't actually remember. Uh, I think it was, but uh, playing Traveler, on the right side of this map and the GDI definitely a different recipe from Green Zero than what Dune Tiger was doing. Blink forward going for those slingshots once again and look at that lands oh actually that was just a regular gren grenade that was not an EMP grenade from Green Zero. The stalemate has been formed the hexalaming is a little bit too powerful for Green Zero to be able to move forward. He does have a very healthy line of juggernauts. And I mean, I assume tungsten shell. Yep, yeah, tungsten shell has been upgraded. So Green Zero does have that advantage, but his Marv has been losing a lot of its health bar. Firehawks coming in. Firehawks dying out. Two of them do escape back to that, uh, to that airfield. 
two juggernauts going to be going down a couple of gunwalkers a couple of corruptors also going down the marb getting dangerously low on health but the tungsten shell of those slingshots is so fast to current to burn down those drones every single drone gets eliminated very nicely area mind control taking these juggernauts away from green zero meanwhile on the north side uh, maybe it wasn't anything. Maybe it was a sniper team over there that Green Zero was trying to sneak in. We did see a couple of sniper teams getting called in by Green Zero. Maybe he was trying to sneak them back in now that he's got a healthier juggernaut number. Packs send out their drones once again, but there are too many slingshots for these packs to, uh, to do very much in this moment. One pack goes down. These slingshots have kept this Marv alive. That cat, that Marv is anchoring the army of Green Zero. Buzzers get called in. Well, they do manage to kill off at least one of the husks. The other buzzers will go down. The engineers do survive the fight. Firehawks coming in for another sweep. Uh, Hammerhead's getting targeted, but no. The slingshots once again keep them safe. Finally, that tip spike does fall. Blink forward by this Eradicator. Some of its health bar disappears. Engineers may be targeted but next, but no. He does back away. Futurama and Green Zero fighting it out eternally across the middle of the map. The slingshots knocking down those drones. The husk does get sniped before any engineers can get grabbed. And this Eradicator Hexbot always happy to move forward and more and more juggernauts. But finally, finally, the Prodigy gets eliminated. The area mind control has been reduced and only one juggernaut went down. Futurama playing with fire as he does those little tricky moves forward. Moving forward, trying to blink back. And the result this time was not nearly as effective. The Firehawks can't be traded infinitely by Green Zero if he's not getting big kills on these packs. Juggernaut Husk getting cleaned up. Green Zero harvesting a decent amount from the middle of the map, stealing away where Futurama once had complete control over the middle of the map. Green Zero has been pushing his front line further forward, ever further forward. Oh, gets the drone ship. Big damage, but he pays for it dearly. Almost every single hammerhead going down. There is still a gravity stabilizer. And Futurama, he has had enough. He's going for the blink once again. A veteran, an, a veteran eradicator steps on forward. Will get the phase as well as the EMP locks it down. Shockwave artillery fires off. It will catch those tripods but only two the other three escape for the current moment that has a fully heroic slingshot juggernauts getting separated out the eradicator hex spot out of that emp going for the crush looking for those slingshots trying to push this army back once again the cultist the prodigies on the front line and green zero's front line has been broken gdi falls to the lasers of scrin Futurama plays out game number one slowly and surely, almost losing control, but taking the big fight when it mattered. Harvesters automatically moving back to the front line, and Futurama doesn't press his advantage. Uh, he didn't grab one of the heroic slingshots, unfortunately, for Futurama. Green Zero, he's only got a couple of... Hammerheads in these zone troopers. Only a couple of zone heads roaming the map. All right, one heroic slingshot has survived. I think he might have had two of them. Orbital bombardment gets called in. One tripod pays the price. The rest should escape for the current moment. Futurama has reformed his front line. Slingshots are here to burn down those drones, and they will take them down extremely quickly. But there's more where that came from. There's a elite Eradicator Hexbot stomping its way forward. Massive damage from the zone heads, but they won't last forever. One by one, they get knocked down, and Green Zero taps out. The GG gets called, and Futurama takes game number one. Futurama almost lets it slip through his hands, and in his moment of triumph, he pauses before going in for the kill. Green Zero fighting that one out narrowly, taking it back, but he just missed. 
He nearly took it back, but that will send us into game number two. And that takes us to Winter Meltdown, our next battleground for this series. In the bottom left-hand corner, switching it up to Black Hand, Plain Cyan, this is Futurama. And he's going to be sticking with GDI. Well, he opened up the last series with an 0-2 loss, so maybe this one will be the same. This is Green Zero. Green Zero was able to make the comeback happen against Phoenix, so opening up 0-1, well, it's not the end of the road. And I guess since this is double elimination, it's not the end of the road regardless. Whoever wins this has to face off against Master Leaf, and the other one will end up pretty uh, pretty far along into the lower bracket. They will have a shot at the comeback, and who knows, we may even see these guys meet back up in the lower bracket finals or in the grand finals for the final face-off of the Kane's Wrath Winter Championship. Master Leaf has shown us some pretty good flame rushes in this tournament and Futurama pivots into Black Hand after a win with Traveler. So all right, all right. It's a second refinery. So we do have to wonder exactly why Futurama has chosen this kind of a pivot. Green Zero garrisons up a couple of structures but he doesn't go for the scout with the rifleman. He instead waits for the scout. He gets the complete scout with this pit bull. He's even going to attack these Harvesters a little bit here. Doing just that smidge of damage. Futurama sending one of his Harvesters back a little bit early so that he can get that cash boost that he right when he needs it. So otherwise, sometimes uh, buildings or units are delayed because of the way the timings work out with Harvesters. Natural expansions coming up basically at the exact same time for both players. Tip spikes gobble, gobbled up. And sometimes we see some funny business around the tip spikes with uh, one of the players going for an airlift. And actually, hey, Futurama, what's this hand of nod for? A couple of rocket squads? Maybe a secret shrine as well. Maybe he wants to go for Black Disciples nice and early. But not uncommon to see the Black Hand player go for a couple of rocket squads, or nod players in general. Go for a couple of rocket squads at your natural expansion as a safety. It means if you're going bike, buggy, or even scorps in your main base, they can hold that front down while... Oh, it is going to be Black Disciples early. Uh, while your rocket squads hold down the natural expansion. Four pit bulls on the move. Now, this is four pit bulls reasonably timed. A couple of rocket squads could be... Oh, Engineer. Engineer in the APC <laughs> did the same thing against Phoenix on this same map. APC will be set to uh, hold fire stance, I assume. Didn't, Futura, didn't Phoenix also have a, a single squad in the south and they passed by each other and nobody noticed? If so, uh, that's pretty funny, the way that these two games are mirroring each other across series, played on different days, and uh, they are, they're turning out a little bit of a mirror between the two of them. Buildings getting garrisoned up. Okay, Cabal Squad does spot this, so Futurama, I assume, is aware. Ooh, there's the flame tank heading on out. Futurama, he has gone full flame weapons. We'll see if he's able to get anything done. He is bringing a couple of rocket squads down to the south. This APC may uh, may not escape, although it will drop off that engineer. It will be able to take this tip spike away from Futurama. So that is going to be annoying for Futurama. Uh, ooh, kind of, kind of running a little bit close there. Never mind. I don't know where this APC is going. <laughs> he's uh, he's going to donate this engineer away. That was a Christmas gift to Futurama, but Green Zero does indeed see the flame tank, so he knows what Futurama is up to. An additional flame tank did emerge there, and the first flame tank gets caught in the middle of the map. It will be getting gunned down by these APCs. Mine drops are good enough to stop one flame tank, and the second flame tank is going to be stopped, I think, equally quickly. AP ammo finishes up just in time. Look at that, so nicely done. And that flame tank wastes all of its time burning down that APC. The pathing was not in the correct way to get any damage onto a significant building. And so, 
Futurama, while taking damage at his own natural expansion, will have failed to do any damage at Green Zero's expansion. Orchestrike getting called in. It will potentially tag one of these Harvesters, and the Pitbull's getting dangerously close to killing off this Harvester, but no. And actually, that Harvester is full of Tiberium, so Futurama, if he sends it back to work too quickly, it could have been disaster, but he's paying attention. Futurama has woken up a little bit from game number one. No cultists just moving blindly into a number of Harvesters and getting gunned down. War Factory does get laser fenced. It does save that War Factory. And with no purifying flame upgrade, it does mean these flame tanks don't burn the buildings down nearly instantly as they do when they have that blue flame upgrade. Harvesters clearing out the main as that MCV emerges. Futurama, like many players in the last couple of years, have really come to love the multi-MCV play. It can be good for just expansions and getting yourself established into your third base. And then, of course, it's always fun to go for those infinite obelisk pushes to try and add on more and more territory to your control to push it forward as your redeemer and your late game units come on out. You say, hey, why not a couple of late game buildings as well? Predator tanks getting spotted by that rocket squad, but the hammerhead cleans up the rockets. Uh, one cabal squad in that building, a rocket in that building. So Futurama will have a little bit of an early warning system, but Futurama is going to be looking to take the expansion in the south, and Green Zero is also posturing down in that direction. The Marv is on the way. The MCV is mooted, moving towards his third. And while well, the airfield is continuing to crank out, although I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pivot into Firehawks at some point. For now, it's probably just going to be more and more Hammerheads, an extremely versatile and useful unit. Ah, it gets a free Harvester kill. All right, easy peasy. Double Sam site, but not quite enough firepower until these bikes show up to scare away these Hammerheads. Green Zero may have overstayed his welcome, but he actually cleaned up really nicely all of those bikes. The damage spread across almost every single Hammerhead. Half of them down to red HP. Futurama got not a single kill. Some of that is the RNG of where those SAM sites choose to fire their missiles, and then the rest of it may be due to those bikes. But either way, a little bit of luck or a middle, little bit of a misplay. Green Zero escapes with all of his hammerheads, cleans up all of those bikes, and now he's going to be following it up with a little bit of APC pressure. MCV is here for both players, and it is going to be a war factory on the front line for Green Zero. Meanwhile, these rocket squads will clean up the Predator tanks and the APC in the north. Nice and easy, no real opposition there. And it's going to be another flame tank that walks right into this mob literally crashes into it and of course that doesn't end well for the boy that's filled up with fuel never good for those flame tanks to go one to one against basically anyone who isn't an infantry sonic emitter out on the field green zero's hammerheads are going to clear the ground up in the north Futurama has decided to try and double expand with his MCB now moving out into the middle of the map. The Marv is already there, and this Marv doesn't have a lot of support, but this MCB doesn't have a lot of support either. APC, APC still waging their war in the south, and Green Zero is the one with the Hammerheads roaming around the map. So I would be honestly more worried about this MCB than I would be about this Marv. The Marv even getting a crush, Green Zero getting huge, huge cash infusion because because of that Marv and Futurama. He is sort of jack of all trades, master of none in this case. And uh, well, in this case, it is not better than a master of one because Futurama feels like he's been trying a bunch of different things and he has no solid game plan for the late game. He was able to get through the mid game just fine. He's got his rockets. He's got basically not much other than that, but his late game plan has yet to materialize. And this Marv can just absorb a bit of damage and bide his time until the reinforcements show up. Green Zero has marvested almost that entirety of the middle field and he's cleaned up in the south, which means he is primed to go into the ultra late game. Sniper team's getting called in very quickly here. 
for Green Zero, and he's going to be able to start clearing out some of these Rocket Squads and save that Marv. Cabal able to clean up some of the snipers. One of them, it looks, will be able to escape. And the Hammerheads have so distracted Futurama, he has been attempting to shut them down, but without any air units. It's just up to these SAM turrets to make it happen. Also, no Mantises really out on the field, at least not yet, for Futurama. I would have liked to see him burn down this tip spike, maybe even go for this refinery in the main base of Green Zero. But his flame tanks have mostly moved through the middle of the map at times when it didn't really make a lot of sense. Juggernauts are out for Green Zero. More reinforcements getting called in. He's got the War Factory and the double barracks in the south. He's got these hammerheads, which can be a threat anywhere on the map. And actually... Uh, this entire base is completely exposed. There's one SAM site there. And even, even, even if you deployed a second SAM site, it's not really going to stop that many hammerheads. And then they can go for three upgraded power plants after that. So that area is completely exposed. A little bit of Tiberium damage to the infantry. No sneaky flame tank in the south. Futurama maybe has passed his flame tank days up. He needs a bit of a miracle win to stop this army. Maybe he'll be able to pull something out. Bloodhound's getting called in. Green Zero trying to spend some of his massive bank that he built up with the Marv, with the third. And Futurama, he's been pretty much drawing his zero on his account for the last couple of minutes. MCB now on the move. Futurama has a lot of man spam, but Green Zero is able to knock it down piece by piece. This northern section has been completely cleared, and now it's just a couple of rockets over here on the left side. The SAM site's getting pushed away. Power plant going to be body blocking for this watchtower, and these watchtowers are just adding a little bit of strength to Green Zero's army. It means he doesn't have to engage this, this rocket army with his hammerheads right from the beginning. He can wait for the power plants. He can wait for the second watchtower to come up, and now they were <laughs> the rocket squad just get cleared comically quickly it is almost the stone age versus the 21st century as the gg comes in and futurama unceremoniously uh jumps to his own death he did not have a plan for the late game game number one complete control from futurama methodical he knew what he was doing and he executed it game number two flame tanks through the middle oh that didn't work i don't know what to do after that futurama not having a standout performance in game number two and green zero calm cool collected crushes it and sends us to game three with an even score which sends us to decrepit arena once Green, beautiful pasture land is now a dry desert, destroyed by the beautiful glow of that Tiberium in the north, playing once again as the Skrin, and this time Vanilla Skrin. This is Futurama. No cultists' tricks here, no prodigy, nothing like that. But on the south side, sticking with GDI, you know who it is. This is Orange Zero. Green Zero takes game number two. And hey, after se after semifinal A was uh, a 3-0, I am happy to see a 1-1 score. Regardless of who ends up taking this series, who goes on to play, play against Master League, at least after the amazing quarterfinals we have, we had, we don't have just two 3-0s, just two slaughters in the upper bracket semifinals. We've got a 1-1 on our hands we've got a series maybe if we're lucky it'll go to game five but obviously both of these players are just hoping to clean this series up in the next two games and go into the winner's bracket final with a 3-1 score always a dichotomy between what we as the viewers want and what the players want every player would love a 3-0 to absolutely crush it to make it not even close and yet we as the viewers we want everything to be the tightest games nail-biting series back and forth no clear victor and the mcvs are on their way to the naturals one thing that is a little bit different about this map that we saw factor into that futurama shock trepid game 
is the Blue Tiberium at the start of the game. We've seen some different takes from people over the years of how do you exploit that Blue Tiberium? It's so far away, so moving your MCV right at the start doesn't make a ton of sense. Shock Trumpet tried to make it work. Maybe there's a build in there somewhere that would make sense. Some players try for the outpost or the expansion right at the beginning of the game, sending that up there. And some players just wait for the mid-late game. It does feel like the mid-late game is the safest option. That's the one that plays out the most normal. And I guess maybe there would be a way to make another build work on this map. But as of yet, no one has found that slam dunk build, that clear winner. Uh, this is a double War Factory opening from Green Zero. The Secret Tank does spot it, so suddenly this game goes from 0 to 100 real quick. This is not what Futurama was expecting. Double War Factory from a GDI. Decrepit Arena, hey, it takes a minute to get across the map, but it is not that big of a map. It is not the biggest in the pool, and Green Zero is closing in. It's going to be Descent for the choice for Futurama. A Stasis Chamber might be an emergency option here. He's going to need some kind of uh, tool to help him live out for the next couple of minutes, and the Stasis feels like it is the right move. Now, Futurama's bank account is pretty close to zero, so he's not going to be able to afford that. So he's going to have to try and just fight this one out unit to unit, strike to strike. And for now, Green Zero is going to have to deal with a little bit of a backstab here. Seeker tanks are going for the harvesters. You're getting my MCB. I'm going to get your harvesters. Five seeker tanks into the back of Green Zero's base. Good splash damage on the refinery as well. But you're really just wanting to kill off these last two. No, he doesn't get it. Green Zero forces Futurama away. Fortunately... For Futurama, he does not lose that drone ship as he pivots back up to the north. It is going to be a double war factory and into dev tanks. They are charged up. They are ready to go. One predator tank gets picked off. A second will be annihilated extremely quickly. And dev tanks need to win this fight handily against Green Zero because behind this, Green can go for an expansion, try and steal the blue, or try and keep up the pressure. But no, the war factory has been sold off and Futurama crushes the army the target fire is too good the mcv gets sold and the second war factory gets placed down futurama has green zero on the run he'll get the engineer and green zero is going to try and play this one out no blue tiberium but with a proxy war factory that MCV cash boost is going to be keeping Green in the game for the next minute or two. He would have loved that additional Harvester, but only losing one keeps him healthier than losing the two. And as long as he can keep Futurama contained, he can pivot and try and bounce back from this disastrous turn that has just happened. That is a lot of dev tanks. They are mostly charged up. One War Factory goes down. Portal for the body block. MCV takes a lot of damage, but still enough of a health bar to keep it around. Predator tanks getting targeted down. One gets eliminated. S damage split across the other two. Trades out for a dev tank. Fresh portal, fresh descents onto the front line. Green Zero needs to make this work. And Futurama is crushing it. Those charged up devs are too strong. Green Zero is going to have to retreat. And even a safety plasma missile battery. He is worried that there is a sneaky airfield back on the other side of the map. He is worried about sneaky plays that Green Zero could be executing. He doesn't know how close to victory he really is, and Green Zero has shot himself in the foot, but mm, that doesn't mean Futurama won't trip over the next hurl and come crashing down as well. Green Zero is still in this one in the sense that he hasn't less, left the game. Uh, arguably, he's not in this one practically, but he's still going to be fighting it out. Thinking about that next map, thinking about that next opportunity. Yeah, maybe he's got an MCB behind this. He does get another dev tank there, and this War Factory hasn't gone down. Despite the Gunwalkers, the Descents, the Lightning Spike, this War Factory is still giving an anchor point, but for the GG to come out. I guess it was anchoring that GG. Green Zero falls apart in game number three. I love the aggressive attempt, and... Hey, when you see your opponent trying to split that blue-green field for their natural, 
trying to disrupt that could be a good way to do it in this case in under seven minutes green zero takes the l futurama gets the win and sends us to game four which sends us to tournament stadium the first time one of these players is at match point in series one we got to match point what felt like so quickly i guess the games were decently long but it felt like so quickly and now pivoting into zocom sticking with cyan this is futurama sticking with orange sticking with gdi in the south going aggressive and it didn't work out in the last game he's got another chance to turn it around this is green zero tournament stadium i feel like this has always been a, a solid map in terms of its popularity ever since it was introduced it's never been as popular as odyssey or highlands or tournament rift but it's never quite you know fallen out of popularity it always gets played here and there it seems like one of those maps that just is always in the middle of the pack whether or not it'll be good for GDI or Zocom, it remains to be seen which one of those guys will find it more useful. For now, I think things are going to be pretty normal. I think we can cool off a little bit. Uh, all right. That's a little preemptive. Okay. I mean, you want to power down the war factory? I don't know what that was. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> uh, why did he power the war factory back up after he builds the refinery? I guess his power plant was far enough along that he said, all right, that's enough. But at any rate, uh, I expect after that last game and the, considering that the map is tournament stadium, things are going to cool down a little bit. Things are going to calm down a little bit. I would be kind of surprised if this was another crazy game. And indeed, so far, I mean, it's looking pretty normal. Green Zero could slap down a second war factory and then suddenly pivot his MCV into the middle of the map. Maybe. It seems unlikely. But for now, Futurama goes for that steal of the Blue Tiberium very, very early on. Uh, like, crazy early on. But he's going to get that blue Tiberium. Eh, some players obviously think it is worth it. Futurama clearly thinks that it is worth it. And he's using these pit bulls to cover that expansion into the middle as well. So he is going to try and fight the pit bulls of Green Zero, sort of one to one. He will be able to jump on the first one as the pit bulls of Green Zero are targeting down that harvest or Futurama will get the first kill and he'll be able to send back the pit bulls that have a little bit lower health. Uh, Green Zero is going to try and jump on the forces of... Oh, splash damage actually giving a bit of a benefit there to Green Zero. So where Futurama should have had the advantage of numbers, he actually does not. Green Zero finds the win in the pit bull war and turns this opening into a little bit of a victory for himself. The pit bulls will explode the damage did get split in the last moment which was exactly the right thing to do in that instance futurama he goes straight for that third refinery grain zero instead it is going to be into the airfield into the orcas once again never can you have too many orcas says green zero and, uh, you know, to some extent, he might be right. We'll see. Last time he got three harvesters for free. This time, he might trade out an orca, and he might not get that third harvester. But the damage will be done to the first couple of harvesters. Uh, okay, woo! That was, almost, uh, that was almost a bit of a painful one as uh, those orcas stood watching over the harvesters doing nothing for just a moment there we go no pit bulls fired any shot at those orcas green zero was distracting futurama in the south classic move you send in an attack group in one location and then you hit another location within a completely separate 
army. And in this case, Futurum actually needs to turn this harvester around and send it back into the main base because he's lost three harvesters there. And Green Zero basically got a little bit of a free win there. Of course, he can always send those Orcas back in to double down on that damage that he already did, completely gutting the main base economy of Futurama. Futurama, Traveler 59, Black Hand, Zocom and Scrim. Those are the four factions he has played. He's hit every main faction uh, in this series already. And now, you know, choosing Zocom in game number four, it feels a little bit curious and it feels once again like Green Zero has the better plan. Futurama was not at all expecting those Orcas. He did not at all respond to those Orcas and he paid the price for it. Now, he's going to be going for that third, but at the same time, he's going to be taking a little bit of pressure from Green Zero. Orca's showing up, and, well, this might be a bit of a mistake for Green Zero. We'll see if he's able to get any harvesters. Orcas come in. APCs are here for two support. Two Orcas going down. A third and a fourth will be eliminated. Green Zero trades all of his Orcas out, sends another Orca strike in, and he will lose a couple of APCs on exit. Pitbull's pushing forward. Honestly, Green Zero, he didn't realize it, but he should have just gone back to the main base. He would have picked up three more Harvester kills. He would have lost zero Orcas up there. He didn't realize it, but that was the open, that was the opening that should have been exploited. Instead, he tried to do that little combo move. Didn't work out for the Orcas. I mean, he did get a bit of damage done, but not nearly as much and not what he really wanted. He could have really cemented a six harvester lead for himself. MCV on the move. Command post is up. We saw the AP ammo has already been purchased. Tier three is up. Firehawks are out on the field for Green Zero. Not into Hammerheads. It's instead going to be Firehawks. Armory is here for our Zocom player. He's got those Tib field suits. He has got AP ammo, I assume. Research. He doesn't have it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Futurama said, tech what for? I don't... What would I use technology for? What would I even need that for? Can you name one thing that it's useful for? Uh, he almost gets that... Okay, he almost gets that Firehawk on the deck. Doesn't quite land it. Uh, this is becoming a bit of a problem. Finally, the command post comes up here for Futurama. He does laser fence one of his refineries, hoping to stop Green Zero from whatever Green Zero is going to do. In the meantime, Green Zero set up nicely at his third. Futurama beating back the pressure at the natural expansion. And Futurama's Tib field suits and unupgraded rifle attacks uh, will be enough to push Green Zero back for now. Green Zero pivots into the main base of Futurama. If he, uh, if he lets himself, he's going to get sandwiched, caught, and killed there in the south. Firehawks knock down one of the refineries. It does still leave the other refinery open and operating in the natural expansion of Futurama. And Green Zero draws the entire army of Futurama back into the very northern edge of the map. Normally, uh, we would, I don't know, expect that there was something else going on in the south with how far Green Zero took that army out of position. But no, Green Zero just wanted to waste a bit of time. He wanted to go up there and hope that Futurama would just be sending his units on a wild goose chase. In this case, Futurama decides, well, I'm up here in the north. I might as well attack your third. He's got a massive squad of infantry. AP ammo has finished up by now. Tanks are here, and it's going to be a fight. Oh, snipers in the building. Two snipers in that building for Green Zero to thin out the infantry herd. A couple of these harvesters are low on health. Futurama clearing out the infantry of Green Zero, but those snipers are a difficult thing to deal with. The harvesters all evac the expansion, and now Futurama, I think, will be picked apart by the reinforcements of Green Zero. A couple of APCs coming in from behind, cleaning up those sniper teams that were exposed. There's still the ones inside of the building, and the Sonic Emitter gets a massive shot. Three APCs 
couple of predator tanks going down in the last moments of that fight it's a double war factory at the natural and the third is slow to be established for futurama but he is getting there eventually green zero with his back against the wall he doesn't want to get sent to the lower bracket and it looks like he's got a decent shot he's made some mistakes but overall it feels like he's been in better control of this game who green zero could have lost control of this game completely right here at the third but he didn't he managed to hold on to it he knocked down another refinery of futurama futurama's economy probably could have exploded by this point uh exploded in a good way could have could have gone explosively upwards in terms of the numbers but green zero cutting down those harvesters in the beginning three harvesters going for a second pass getting one more and then knocking down the refineries to slow down the refining slow down the income of futurama it's going to be almost mirrored armies here apcs rockets riflemen ap ammo on both sides a couple of breads for futurama and green zero with mass apc cuts through the forces of futurama what few reinforcements show up get blasted down by a sonic emitter firehawks return from another successful bombing run futurama will lose his harvester in the middle of the map he is turning tail and running out of options out of time futurama taps out the gg comes in green zero will secure his fifth game his final shot to go into the upper bracket finals futurama he's given some games away he's tried some alternate factions but it feels like if he wants to win this series there is one faction that he's really good with which sends us to a real strange map in red zone nine a one player variant of red zone rampage in the top right hand corner playing cyan playing traveler 59 give it up for futurama and in the south east it's actually the southwest i don't know directions playing as the red gdi this is green zero all right 1-1 one, one into 2-2. Two, two. We've got ourselves an ace match on our hands. And the engineer dies moments before the capture. The last rifleman goes down as well. And that, well, it may not totally tilt you, but that is the sort of thing that can tilt you right at the start of a game. Three buzzers to scout the base. Whew. Futurama gets his tip spikes. He denies one of Green Zero's tip spikes. He kills all of the scouting riflemen. And there is also this low health tip spike in between the two bases. You start with Blue Tiberium, so losing the Engineer, well, it's not just as big of a deal. If he exited and got a kill on that Engineer, that would... Uh, not only be hilarious for us, but absolutely damaging to the mindset of Green Zero. Into the middle of the map goes the MCV. It's a very short walk to your uh, quote-unquote natural expansion. Of course, with this being Blue Tiberium, it is sort of like having a main and a natural in terms of economy. Uh, right at the same time, you've got a bane and a natural all rolled into one. In the bottom right-hand corner, the true southeast location, we do indeed have a mutant hovel that you can capture. There's also an expansion point here, which I don't think the last time we saw this map, the uh, which I think was the king of the hill between Drive, Rex, and Futurama. Uh, I don't think we saw that expansion point come into play. It did sort of, the game did sort of come to a head up in this section of the map, if I uh, am remembering correctly. It's going to be Descents, it's going to be a C, it's going to be a uh, Nerve Center and a Stasis Chamber coming in here for Futurama. He's played around with some different factions and Futurama has played GDI very well in, in tournaments in the past. Uh, not this one. 
that Zocom game was not particularly good. I don't know if he hasn't been practicing Zocom. Is that engineer bugged? Is he caught or is he just uh, glitching out visually and he's not actually locked down there? Gunwalkers on the move. Double expand into the middle of the map for Green Zero. Futurama descending around the map from the north to the south with his descents. Cultists are here, and it looks like things are about to go crazy between these two players. The minimap alight with these cyan dots moving left, moving right, circling around and looking for the fight. Is he about to take all of the tib spikes away from his opponent? Slow field comes in, catches a whole bunch of the APCs all together. The, ha the hammerheads are now out. They snipe down one of the cultists, nice and easy. Tib spikes taken away from Green Zero. It's going to be annoying as the game goes on, but Futurama has burned through his entire blue field. This is his early game plan. Cultists are here ready and waiting to take the next move but not ready just yet to step forward into the fight. The retreat gets called, and Futurama deploys his drone ship. Green Zero with the perfect scan to reveal there is nothing here. That wasn't an all-in, but that was a big pressure play from Futurama. I do love so much that he grabbed two of the Tiberium Spikes, giving himself four total. I kind of thought that he was going to try and grab this one as well, but that is still just a buzzer in that location. Refinery gets added on. Warp Chasm at the same time. The only thing that Futurama is missing is the Gravity Stabilizer to sort of be the security and the, uh, the safety for his late game plans. Harvester on the move to the teeny tiny Blue Tiberium Field in the northwest corner. Foxhole garrisons up. And, uh, well, we can always hope that someone will take that mutant hovel in the corner of the map. I don't think anyone really will. Growth Accelerator has been deployed. Eradicator Hexapod screamed its birth to the world. And I think that does signal to Green Zero how far behind he is in his Marv timing. Is this the Reclamator Hub? There we go. Does get deployed. Not a lot of building space that makes a lot of sense because of this bot this bit of terrain there and because of the tiberium field it kind of means you either have to put it on the very very front line or you kind of have to put it in this other spot over here to the side and in this case it is going to be zone heads hey if you're gonna go for zone heads a, a map with where you start with blue tiberium is probably a good one to go zone heads on uh blink forward by this eradicator could uh, get a kill on a couple of these APCs. Nope, the discs miss on those last couple of shots. Miss on a couple of those shots and uh, don't get the kill on that second APC, unfortunately, for Futurama. Green Zero, he is looking for a similar recipe that we have seen many, many times in the past. The Marv, the Juggernauts, the Hammerheads. I guess the only thing he's missing at this point is the sniper teams, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him get those. A couple of more APCs going to be getting grabbed, but the Harvester will be the counter damage. Three APCs for a Harvester. Green Zero is probably going to be happy with that. He's not going to be happy that he missed the first Blue Tiberium Harvester, but he is going to be okay with the fact that he cleaned that one up, that he denied that additional income from Futurama. There's a lot of Tiberium on this map to be gathered especially when you count the value of the blue Tiberium. There is much Tiberium to be shared between the two players. Green Zero will knock down one of the tip spikes. He has reclaimed one of the other ones, and he cleared out the one in the middle. So now they are both down. Well, they are down to two and one, as Green Zero has uh, resecured that one. And hey, the sniper teams are now out. Prodigy Hunters... That is probably part of their job. Juggernaut shot collars. That is the other part of their job. I guess cultist hunters as well. Although the cultists haven't seen much of an appearance in this part of the game. We did finally get the ace match that we wanted. We got a couple of them in the quarterfinals, and we're getting at least one here in the semifinals. Blink forward. The Prodigy is back at home. One Harvester pays the price, but this Eradicator can't stay much longer. 
it's always going to be right on the edge. And look at this sniper team. I mean, if the sniper teams get close, they can knock out that prodigy. But you do have to be careful of the timing. Might just use the... Uh... Oh, actually, a couple of juggernauts could fire off and knock down that growth accelerator real quick. Would slow that down a little bit. Upgrades on the anti-air make the hammerheads a bit more difficult to execute their moves. And yeah, these sniper teams have to be careful. There's two plasma missile batteries already waiting near that tier three. Very common for Skrin to basically surround their tier three with plasma missile batteries so that any firehawks who strato fight are in will die. It'll make it as costly as possible for them. Uh, slingshot's going very deep into enemy territory. Curiously deep into enemy territory. And these Firehawks are going to try and roll in here, I guess. Uh, snipers go for the kill on the Prodigy. They do get the Prodigy. The Cultists and the Gunwalkers still giving chase to those Slingshots. And one random Slingshot gets left and forgotten there on the right side of the map. One Sniper team down, but the second one is rounding the corner in the north. The third is split off there. And actually, no! That sniper team just gets turned around. So the cultists do find out that sniper team. Green Zero's best laid plans are coming up with nothing. He's still got a lot of cash. I mean, they both have a fair amount of cash in the bank and at their disposal. So we are by no means in the final stages of the game. And just because a couple of things have not gone Green Zero's way in the last couple of minutes does not mean he is out of it by any means. Actually, Futurama, not a lot of cash in the bank. Uh, I don't know what that's a demonstration of, just showing him, just showing off that he can. He can heal and also uh, damage his own prodigy, so I guess good for him. Futurama's blue tabrium has actually grown up quite a bit, so if this attack goes wrong, then Futurama... Ooh, the sniper teams! Futurama is genuinely learning a shift in mindset. A bit of a... I gotta watch out for this. Juggernaut's gonna be finding there straight up one to one, and it's going to be with an Eradicator. It will actually be a two against one, and the Eradicator does win that fight for the current moment. Those, those slingshots do so much damage. The slow field catches this Marv. Futurama is gonna try and go for the kill if he can. Slingshots are here, hammerheads are here as well. Plasma missile batteries have really good range though, so those hammerheads will, uh, it's gonna be forcing a blink. Okay, perfect there from Green Zero. That Eradicator Hexapod dodges out. Fire for effect, but the only thing that Shockwave Artillery hits is a plasma missile battery. Firehawks come in, they Strato Fighter out, one pack goes down, Marv takes a lot of damage, Eradicator Hexapod can trade it out, he's gonna be happy to push forward like this, and the sniper team of Green Zero that traded sides is still just watching over this whole thing. Hammerheads move forward, Marv dangerously low on health, blink forward on top of two more of those juggernauts, but instead go for the harvesters, one down, and there's the blink away of the Eradicator. The Marv survives, the Eradicator survives, and that sniper team goes further into enemy territory. The slingshots find another kill as one of them ranks up and one goes double bet. Green Zero could push back these plasma missile batteries. He could do big, big damage, but Futurama has just about encircled his base with high-powered anti-air. It makes those, uh, the Juggernauts once again getting targeted. Two more going down. It's six against one. The Juggernauts for the Eradicator, and the Eradicator is one every single time. The Husks get shut down. It looks like a couple of these Husks may have actually been mind-controlled, and so Green Zero may have had to kill them off himself. Slingshots go in deep for the packs. One down, two down. They won't get the third. And the Elite Slingshot does go down. Unfortunately, no superhero slingshots this time. 
Green Zero gets the Blue Tiberium in the top left-hand corner. He's got his own main base as well. And once again, this Eradicator trading out its health bar. The sniper teams are here, though. They didn't have enough time to go deep into enemy territory to find that prodigy. It's on the edge of range. Maybe the sniper teams could walk their way around and find an angle on that prodigy to take it down before, the, before it teleports the Eradicator away and then Green Zero could make some forward progress. No EMP grenades this time. They didn't find much effect for Dune Tiger. They didn't find much effect for Green Zero either. And the Shockwave Artillery in this particular tournament has missed a lot more than it's hit. There's the blink forward of that Eradicator Hexapod. And once again, Green Zero is going to be able to quickly send it back away. It feels like this map is really well set up for anyone who wants to do this because of how it doesn't seem like there's very much surface area. Normally, it feels like there's more surface area that you can exploit, so there aren't as many anti-air defenses. But without Green Zero being able to get anything done as like a counterattack, if he was able to sneak a couple of tanks around the north side of the map, he could potentially find some damage against the infrastructure of Futurama. He could open up the base a little bit here. If he could even take down this group of power plants, that might be enough to let the Hammerheads have their way. Drone platform taking a lot of damage there. Not in that in one instance, but over the course of this game, that drone platform has taken quite a bit of damage. Green Zero, who has had good control of the top left-hand corner field, that little blue field, now has to give up that control to the Eradicator Hexpot. Blink forward once again onto all of these juggernauts. The predictive shockwave artillery was not there. I'm not sure where it even fired off, but the phase locks down this Eradicator, and it's going to be the Marv and the juggernauts that eat that Tiberium meteor. One juggernaut goes down, and the hammerheads will just circle on the north side looking for that opportunity phase absorbing all of these shots and the anti-air of green zero is nowhere to be found but the anti-air of futurama is also nowhere to be found. there's the slingshot there's the firehawks coming in the packs are here the marv is taking its damage but honestly that cloud of hammerheads is also extremely dangerous for futurama and there's the blink back by that Eradicator Hexpod. He is not too worried. He's gone forward and back many times again. And Green Zero has yet to find a solution. He is fighting this war and continuing to fight the war. Neither player really willing to change tactics, to change much of their army composition, to really try anything different. They instead are just fighting over this northern piece of land. Slingshots are here, taking a little bit of damage. Green Zero might be finding a path along the southern ridge. Maybe it'll lead him into the heart of Futurama. It does feel like Green Zero is losing the War of Attrition, so he is the one who has the timer on him. Maybe an Ion Cannon would be a solution. The six or seven minute countdown is a long time to wait, but it would at least force a move one way or the other and if green zero can't get some tanks in on the ground in the opposite side of the map then he is forced to fight this out although no suddenly he has a ton of slingshots oh, actually a lot of slingshots oh my gosh using the slingshots to kill off the hammerheads as somehow how are those hammerheads not killing off that one slingshot that was, that was a bizarre amount of damage that that slingshot absorbed, or perhaps the hammerheads were accidentally attacking the Eradicator Hexapod instead. The slingshot does go down. The slow field affecting... Ah, okay. Affecting that Eradicator. And Green Zero has found a little bit of damage. We saw him dancing over this center ridge with his hammerheads earlier, finding a bit of damage here or there. And a couple of sniper teams might be able to end this prodigy. Oh, he blinks the product. He blinks the unit away. He's going to send it into the clutches of his mechapedes. And as soon as it returns to Green Zero's control, it'll get lit up. Oh, no, he's going to try and force fire. There we go. Bye-bye. 
It does eventually return to Green Zero's control, but at that point, it just uh, didn't quite matter. I'm also surprised Futurama hasn't tried to do anything else. Green Zero might. He can get the accelerator. I don't know. If he wants to really dance, he might be able to take down a couple of those power plants, and it might be enough to send him into low power mode. That's one of those things where if Futurama gets sent into low power mode, it could be a cascade that just keeps on giving. Green Zero backs on off with his hammerheads. He's got a great number of slingshots. He's got a pretty good number of hammerheads. This Eradicator close to going heroic. Going to try and get that last rank up. Does clean up another hammerhead. Is going for a, a juggernaut as well. Has Futurama claimed that juggernaut husk? Hey, he did. He grabbed the juggernaut. And he is, uh, he's got his own juggernaut now. That he can heal up. That he can get it back up to full health. Slingshots dancing on the edge of danger. Sniper team's there. I don't know. Maybe there's an opportunity for the sniper teams to bleed away at these anti-air defenses and uh, use the juggernaut bombardment to just take out the anti-air defenses, which are at the very edge of range. And then maybe the hammerheads could come in. The war of attrition continues in the north. Both of these players hitting the pause button and happy to just sit here. Futurama's army growing bigger and bigger. Green Zero's army growing bigger and bigger. Maybe not quite as quickly. All right, signal transmitter goes down. Hey, that's not a bad thing. Sniper teams do get revealed there by that uh, plasma missile battery. Gunwalker is here. Would be kind of great if uh, he was going to be able to land the shots on that war factory. Another shockwave artillery. Another big miss. They just have, in this whole tournament, they just have not been landing pretty much at all. And no, oh, the tier three. Will the last volley land? Last volley might land. Orca Strike gets called in as well. Uh, it didn't look like the, it doesn't look like the Juggernaut's got a last round off, a last round off before the sniper team died. So the Orca Strike will do a bit more damage, but ultimately it will not end that. Or uh, the Orca Strike might not even land. No, the Orca Strike doesn't land at all. It does feel like the Orca Strike has been uh, reduced in health a little bit in R19. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but it does feel like it is getting killed off before it actually makes it to the target more than it used to be. Maybe that's just uh, my perception. Maybe I'm a little bit wrong there. Area Mind Control comes in, locks down a couple of these slingshots. Four slingshots taken away from Green Zero. And, uh, well, he's going to try and run them in. And Green Zero says, that Ion Cannon is my only hope. He is, Joe, oh, chasing down those hammerheads with these slingshots. And Green Zero can get them healed back up, but that's four slingshots eliminated in just a couple of moments. Half of the slingshots of Green Zero when he is having this much trouble closing out the game. And Futurama, he is just so happy to play this one out 100% passively. He was a lot more active in some of these other games, but in this game, he has been almost entirely passive. Sitting back, 100% defense, closing up his base and trying to just make this one last as long as possible. He knew the first series was a little bit fast, so he was like, all right, this one's going to take a really long time. Three more Juggernauts go down. Three more Engineers will need to be produced by Green Zero to reclaim those husks. Tier 3 getting targeted down once again. Maybe this time it will be a little bit more successful. And yes, Futurama does not build the Gunwalker. He does not get the kill on that Sniper team. It's going to be close. The Engineer is going to be able to go for the recovery. Pax and a Devastator Warship or two heading forward. Slingshots mostly burning down those drones, and the Slingshot Army has been rebuilt, but not many Skrin air units fall away 
blinked forward by that Eradicator. He's fully heroic. He's ready to tango, but he's going to have to get on out of here. And now, even the Roar Factory taking a little bit of damage there. Bleeds out a couple of units from Green Zero, but not all that much. The Sniper team survive. Green Zero is keeping his hope alive. Tier 3, Snipe isn't the end of the world, but it's nice to force Futurama to rebuild that. Both players harvesting huge, huge amounts of cash over the course of this entire game. The Blue Tiberium that you start with, the Blue Tiberium in the corner, and the pretty big fields in the middle of the map will lead this to be a very high dollar game, but a very low action game as both players feel unable and ill-equipped to actually move out and win a straight up fight. Futurama, I'm genuinely surprised he doesn't have like 16 tripods. With the amount of cash that he has gathered over the course of this game, I'm surprised he has not been able to find the cash to get uh, a bunch of tripods out onto the field. EMP finally locks down the Marv, and that is the move that Futurama was waiting for. Shockwave Artillery fires off. Will it finally find its mark? Yes, finally, but there's just nothing. Juggernaut's lined up just yet. The drone ship is moving in over. It'll get obliterated by those slingshots. It does land before they can find their shots. The slingshots lighting up those packs one by one. Four minutes on the clock for that ion cannon. Two juggernauts going down. And Green Zero's last stand will be the hammerheads against this eradicator. The juggernauts find their last couple of shots. But the front line collapses. And Green Zero's run in the upper bracket will end with his natural expansion his marb goes down the packs stand tall the eradicator is here and the hammerheads are being dealt with maybe not green zero finds the hammerheads to lead him to victory in the hammerheads alone the eradicator hasn't been dealt with so he is far from out of the woods Futurama has blasted down almost everything that opposes him, but he doesn't want to end the game just yet. He decides to back on off and to wait out the phase to heal up and go back in when the Eradicator is at 100%. Green Zero forced to call in a, an Orca Strike against his own husks to deny them from Futurama. Blink forward. The last hope of these hammerheads was the airfield, was that they could heal up, and now the airfield is gone. The hammerheads are going to have to pivot, and Green Zero is running for the hills. He has not much left in the tank. He's got not much left in his base. And it all comes crashing down, led by a fully heroic eradicator led by a heroic epic unit for Futurama. The sniper teams were a nice attempt. It's not enough to send them into low power mode. It might be enough with the next one. Oh, there we go. Can he pivot? But no, the gunwalkers are here. Too much damage has been done. There's zero fire hammerheads left and the GG gets called. Green Zero has been defeated. Futurama advances 3-2 to the winner's bracket final. Green Zero, who has defeated Futurama in tournaments several times over the course of 2022, often in the round of eight or the round of four, finds now the revenge of Futurama served to him. And of course, we don't say goodbye to Green Zero just yet. His GDI will live on in the lower bracket as Futurama moves on to face off against Master Leaf. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This tournament has been fantastic so far, and I'm hoping the last rounds will be good as well. And this is Cyber, signing out.